Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanasa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So I've got Jocelyn with me today and we just want to take some time to talk with you about colors in goats. We hear a lot about colors in goats, especially with dappling. Dappling, paints, solid colors. And you see and hear lots and lots of things online that I wanted to talk with you about. Kind of what triggered this is the other day I was looking online and somebody had a picture of a traditional colored boar goat, but they were like, oh, he has dappled genetics in him. Well, the reality about dappled genetics is this, it's polygenetic. It means there is no straight dominant gene or recessive gene. There's a lot of different genes that go in together to make color happen. <laughs> and we have been having, we've been breeding different colors into our flock for what, probably about five years now, right? Mm -hmm. And we've bred in about everything you can think of to kind of see what we're going to get. And it seems like almost consistently our moms, regardless of the buck that we breed on them, their babies tend to have the same color patterns, wouldn't you say? We have a few dappled mm -hmm. moms that have dappled babies. We have a few dappled moms that never have dapple babies. Uh, we have a paint mom that always has paints no matter what. We have some Nigerian dwarfs and we have some dairy breeds as well. So the benefit of our farm, I suppose, is that we've been breeding lots of different breeds for lots of different <laughs> years and we can kind of give you an idea of what to expect as far as your color is concerned. I don't want to beat anybody up here, but if someone is selling you a baby and they're saying, oh, guaranteed it's going to be dappled, you know what? If you buy a dappled baby, you may get a solid color uh, baby out of that. Uh, you may get a dappled baby. You may get who knows what. We had one year we bred a dappled buck on a really wild colored doe. Uh, what was our big guy that we had for years and years that was super yeah. dappled? Bill. Oh, Bill. We had Bill that we bred on lips. Remember lips? Yeah. She had all kinds of weird color all over her head, all over her mouth. Uh, we called her lips because she had black lipstick look like around her lips. She was dappled. He was dappled. No Ooh. kidding. They had babies that came out being a uh, brown head traditional, didn't it? And they were both black. And they dappled. were they were both black dappled. And and the baby came out with solid white body, brown head. So you never can tell. This was just the first goat that we were able to grab. So when we talk about the genes that are in place, probably the number one gene that you're going to hear about as far as coloration is concerned is called the kit gene that's short for kit oncogene originally they thought it was a gene that caused cancer it, it can potentially cause cancer uh, that's where the oncogene comes in but the other thing that it deals with is skin pigmentation it also deals with uh, melanin and all kinds of other things so this is primarily what we see come out of our Oberhosley females. So very traditional color Oberhosley females bred on dapples. Historically speaking, this is what we'll see. We see generally a, a solid color body with some darker masking in the face still coming from mom. And then we'll get these light colored spots that just pop up every so often. Now, we have sold some of these bucks to um, other breeders and we found that they had some light dappling in their babies, but nothing spectacular. So this guy right here is out of Disco Bob and a traditional Oberhosley that we'll show you a picture of as well, just to give you an idea. Now, last year we bred Oberhosleys onto another uh, tiger dapple and got almost the exact same outcome. So, so this is a La Mancha baby, and you can notice same thing, bred on the same dappled buck, and mom was solid white La Mancha. Similar things, and we notice this a lot with our dairy breeds over and over and over. Solid body coloration. It seems like these genetics with the, the um, dairy breeds is really, really strong. Solid body coloration with some coloration, some very, very light dappling, but overall not much. Same thing, a little bit of the black mask. Here's our uh, Oberhosley mom that we were just telling you about when we were talking about that baby with the dappling. Is this a different one? Yeah. Yep. And this is a different one. Again, similar. You can see Oberhosley mom, tiger dappled dad, and again, solid coloration, masking in the face, a little bit of masking in the face, and just some odds and ends dappling throughout. This one's actually the brother of the one Jocelyn and I showed you earlier. Very, very common. We see that over and over and over when it comes to dapples bred on these dairy breeds. So if you come over here, let's come over here and take a look. So both of these babies are out of dappled mothers, two different dappled mothers. 
This one is out of coconut, which is one of our tiger dapples. The, this is very typical for babies that she has for us. So if you look at this baby, you're gonna notice this. So she looks really dappled. She's got a nice tiger dappling to her. We really dig her color. Dapple mom, dappled dad. But look at this, when I run my hands across her, see how I've got that double coat? See, I've got a lot of white underneath there. If you're seeing this with your babies, what's gonna happen is, is a lot of this, uh, where you see the double coat and the white underneath, a lot of this is gonna fade out to white as the baby ages. So when you look at this baby now and it looks like it's got tons and tons of color, a lot of this gray and silver here is actually gonna fade out to a solid white. And you're gonna have some of these browns um, and khakis in here that are gonna give you some highlights. Now, is this another one out of coconut as well? Yeah, these are both coconuts. So this is out of the same mom a little bit better coloration, not as much of the double coating in this one. But again, see where this off color, the silver is? Almost all of this is gonna fade to white. So you're definitely gonna wanna run your hands up and over and kinda check them out and see how, see how things look. The darker colors tend to stay, but this silver stuff that's got the white undertone, that's all gonna fade out to white as the, as the baby's age. So talking about double coat, this one here, Looks really nice, lots and lots of color and dappling to them. This one is super duper double coated. And when you look at this guy, look at that hiding underneath there. Almost all of this dark coloring that you see on this baby, all of that is gonna fade out to white. So if you're looking online, you're looking at animals that you're thinking about buying and bringing into your farm. Can you flip them around so we can see the other side? Um, and you're thinking about bringing them into your farm and you're like, oh cool, they got all this color be careful because a lot of this is gonna be gone really, really soon. Probably by at least a year of age, this entire goat is gonna actually fade out to white on us. Now here's another example. Does this goat have a name? No. Yeah, it does. Uh, what did we name this one? Raven? Yeah, Raven. So this is Raven. Raven's mom is a very, very, uh, dappled, black and white dappled uh, boar goat. And she was bred on a tiger dapple this last year. And she always has solid black babies. Almost always has singles, almost always has so solid black babies. And she has been bred on at least four different bucks that I can think of since we've gotten her. Um, all of which had varying degrees of dappling and other colors and she always throws solid black babies. So again, the reality I would say to you is, is if you wanna buy an animal and you wanna guarantee that you're gonna get color, you wanna guarantee that you're gonna get dappling, you almost have to buy an experienced nanny from a farm that has coloration uh, proven, that she has actually had dapple babies because from what we've seen, you can absolutely not take the, the color of that individual and assume that anything. This is actually a Nigerian dwarf cross, is it not right here? Yeah. So this is actually a Nigerian dwarf cross. Um, mom is very uh, traditional Nigerian dwarf. We'll show you a picture of her here. Um, but this is very typical that we get off of dappling with Nigerian dwarfs. Not to say that you can't get uh, different genetics. Again, polygenic, right? So we talk about you know the kit gene, but there's also numerous other ones. ASIP, the ASIP gene, MC1R, TYRP1. All of these genes are things that play a role in this. So again, be very, very careful. We just wanna show you what we've seen over and over and over, so now you have a little bit better idea. All right, so let's move on to a paint goat bred on a dapple. So we can kind of show you, generally speaking, what we see in that regard. All right, so here is another example of a dairy cross uh, paint and her baby, which is almost an identical. And we have had, Tina's one of our oldest goats that we've had for the longest amount of time. We have bred her on traditionals, dapples, paints, solids, we get this every year. Uh, this is what she looks like. This is pretty much what we get. And again, this seems to be par for the course. So it would appear that if you're wanting uh, lots and lots of color, if you're wanting to change it up easier, I would highly recommend getting a boar goat, a Kiko, something of that nature. I find that the dairy goats do not accept the dappling very well. 
um, and it just doesn't come out as as handily as it does uh, with like the Kiko's bores and things like that. Okay, you can go ahead and put her This in. is her baby. Um, Mrs. French is a traditional headed boar goat. This is a good example of kind of not knowing what you're gonna get. We generally tend to get dapple capes out of her, no matter what we breed her on. So this last year we bred her on a blackhead traditional, or actually this is a black dapple, isn't it? So this year, this is a black dapple with her. And it seems like if we breed her on a brown dapple, we get brown headed dapple cape. And if we breed her on a black, uh, we get a black headed dapple cape, but we almost never get anything in the body. So again, know the mom, know what the mom generally has. And that is probably what you're more than likely to get. Hey Josh, you wanna grab that brown headed traditional one that's up there um, on top? So of this is a traditional bread on a black dapple. And you can see we've got some black undertones under here in the cape. You, I wouldn't necessarily call it dappling, uh, but we do have some black undertones to flip them around. Got a little bit more black coloration in here, but again, solid body. And this is what this mom tends to throw.